wiser. Older and wiser. Wiser, yeah. With age, we become wiser. Wise, wise, yes. <laughs> I am older than the last time I saw y'all. And uh, like I said, I'm wiser, though, than the last time I saw y'all. So, so it's good. Um, Miss Teresa asked me tonight how old I was, and I, I did not hesitate. I'm 58 years old. 58 years old. And uh, I just know that I'm getting closer to seeing Jesus every time I have one of them birthdays. And I am thankful. Amen. One, two, one, two. Amen. Amen. We are in Malachi tonight. Um, there is uh, one, two, one, two, one, two. There I am. Well, y'all still looking for stuff? Okay, good job. Good job. Um, I'm so thankful you're here, Jonathan. Yes, I am. Majorly outnumbered tonight by the ladies, but I told them, I said, it's very nice to have all you ladies in here tonight. Um, just also to kindly prepare y'all, we're going to get interrupted by the youth tonight. Um, huh? They're doing a scavenger hunt tonight. And uh, so, so just to let, let y'all know that they will be coming in um, at some point in time. And so I just want to kind of prep y'all to let y'all know because they, uh, uh, Cameron asked, asked me if it was okay. And I said, sure, it's okay. So y'all come tell them to, he said, I don't want to, to do it if you don't want to be interrupted. And I said, it won't bother us. We'll, we'll manage. Uh, so uh, they will be coming in at some point in time on their scavenger hunt. Um, remember next Tuesday night, Footprints in the Sand, which is a support group that meets once a month. Uh, they will have uh, Bart Absher here, and he will be the, uh, the guest speaker. And I think he's going to be talking about um, health care that type of thing. Take care of yourself if you're hot. So, you know, yes, yeah. As, so, as the summer's coming to an yeah, end. As the summer's coming <laughs> to an end. That's true. So true. So, uh, so next Tuesday night, if you don't have anything to do, we'd love to have you to come be a part of that. We have a light meal, and uh, it, it's really a, uh, a good time of fellowship and normally... Um, a good word from a guest speaker, and so we had a good time with that as well. Any other announcements? Any other announcements from anyone? Uh, this place looks bare since Elizabeth's got everything out of here, doesn't it? I looked and I thought, oh man, it looks naked. So, yeah. Well, I am thankful we don't have fog machines. Uh, so, but. <laughs> uh, okay. How about new prayer concerns tonight? Others? Yeah. Yeah. He he was supposed to have started the therapy in town. Did she mention it? She didn't say because I was asking. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. She said, I mean, she said he was going to start it, but she didn't say 
everything's okay, but I could just tell I'm out of I was over there Sunday, and yeah. so, uh, yeah. So Sunday, Sunday, Sunday before last, or, yeah. And uh, they were, he was starting his physical therapy and having to go up there, so. Yeah, a little okay. bit. Yeah, yeah. Others? Any others? Okay, doctor's appointment Monday. Okay. Others? Tomorrow. How old's Layla? Five. Okay. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you tonight for uh, our time that you have given us that we might gather together as your church, your people, the body of Christ. We are so thankful tonight that you have uh, given us this privilege that uh, we can come and gather ourselves together and have this time of friendship and fellowship, have the meal together. Uh, to just love one another and support one another, encourage one another. Thank you for each and every family that is represented here this evening. And Father, we do lift one another up tonight in prayer. We pray, dear Lord, that uh, you would minister unto each of us that have gathered in this place tonight. You know all of our hurts, you know all of our pains, you know our sufferings, as well as our joys. And Father, we bring them before you tonight, just asking that you administer unto us. For Lord, we know that we're all broken vessels to some extent, but we know that you're the potter. And we know, dear Lord, that as we give ourselves back unto you, that you uh, remold us, reshape us, reform us, and you heal our brokenness. So Father, we ask for that healing tonight whether it be healing of the mind, whether it be healing of the body, or healing of the spirit, we ask that you send your spirit upon us to heal us. And we ask, dear Lord, tonight for these prayers that have been mentioned tonight, as well as the unspoken requests. We ask, dear Lord, that you administer to each of these situation, situations specifically uh, we know that there is um, persons, dear Lord, that health is, is just not well, and we understand situations that are out of families' controls, and Lord, we, we just understand that there is so many things going on in, in these persons' lives as well as our lives, and we know tonight, dear Lord, that you are a God that can handle it. So, Father, we bring our prayers and our concerns to you tonight, and we ask that your perfect will be accomplished. Thank you again for this evening. Thank you for all these that gather. Thank you for the meal. And we ask now that you bless our time as we open your word. May, may your spirit give us knowledge and wisdom. And we ask it all in Christ's holy name. Amen. 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 <coughs> so... So, Christopher, where Malachi. are we at tonight? Malachi. Malachi. Yeah. All right. <laughs> back yeah. in Malachi. Yeah, back in Malachi. That we thought would take one week, and we got one chapter. Yeah. <clears throat> I believe we might get chapter two tonight. See my notes? Maybe. Um, yeah. This is, as we've been studying since, uh, gosh, I don't know when we started this. 
this is the last of the 12 minor prophets. Uh, we've been studying the minor prophets all throughout during this time. Uh, he is at the very end of the Old Testament. Uh, the name Malachi means messenger, and it also can be angel. So remember we spoke about the prophets being a certain person with a certain word from God for certain people, which this had to, most of them had to do with pre-exile of going to Babylon, and then this is also Malachi here is the post-exile where they've returned from uh, Babylon. This is probably... They've been back in Jerusalem and in the area probably 100 years. Uh, it's been a while since they've been there. The temple's been rebuilt. Uh, the town is starting, or the city of Jerusalem is starting to stand up on its own a little bit more, but the Israelites are still going about uh, their normal habits, as they've always done since you go back all the way to the beginning of the Old Testament. Um, they start living for, for themselves in some way. But as all the prophets have done, Malachi, his story is a little bit the same. It's where the Lord is trying to call these people back into a relationship with him. It is to renew that covenant, renew that relationship. And so Malachi uh, is a little bit more forceful, I guess you could say it. I think we spoke about it last week of it being uh, one writer, he referred to it as being sophisticated sarcasm is the way Malachi is written. Uh, we start out with several different uh, statements from the Lord, which the people question, and then the Lord gives them an answer. So it's, you know, uh, the Lord says things like, you have, you have not loved me. Well, when have we not loved you? Well, when you did this, you know, he points out the different issues. Uh, I started thinking about this again this week, of even some of these questions. If the Lord was to say that to me, I'd probably say, well, when did that happen? You know, where we do the same thing. Well, I thought I was loving you, Lord. No, here you, you kind of failed a little bit. He's kind of pointing out um, where they're falling short. You know, we, we've talked about falling short in previous Bible studies of where there's a certain mark that we need to be hitting and there's times where we don't even get close to that mark because we're thinking with our, ourselves rather than our hearts and following God. But last week, we covered chapter 1, and it immediately went into one, straight into the questions. And there's about eight of them here, and I think we got two of them done, or three of them. Uh, but this week, we go into the... Um, uh, let's, let's finish off with the third one that we had last week. The final, the final thing, uh, the question was, is that... Um, where's that? He, he talked about them defiling the altar. In other words, they, wouldn't, they were bringing uh, bad sacrifices to bring unto them to where they wasn't giving him all the good stuff. They, they were just giving the remnants of what they had left over. Uh, where, where the covenant called for an unblemished calf or an unblemished sheep to be brought to the altar, they were bringing the old nag that lived on the backside of the hill that was lame. Uh, and so it had gotten to that point, but one of the questions that, that the Lord was pointing out to them is, y'all have gotten to a point of where it's a burden following all these rules. It's a, it's a burden to follow you, God. It's a burden for us to even have some semblance of worship. And I think we discussed that of how, you know, the, the, even today our worship can become where we feel like it's a burden to show up. Where it shouldn't be, it should be a rejoicing time in our life. But um, you got anything on that before we move on to chapter 2? Well, and, and you said a while ago uh, that God was calling them back into the relationship. Uh, this is very practical for you and I today. For... God is calling us into the relationship as well. He calls us into the relationship with, with him, and we know that we do that through Christ. But you also mentioned that um, about the priests, and, and, mm -hmm. and leading us into this priestly thing, it helps us understand that God loved them, even though in their unfaithfulness, and the biggest reason, though, that they were asking 
when, why, they didn't understand they had done these things because the priests had failed. Yep, which and, is. and that leads us right into the second chapter. Uh, they didn't understand that they were had done wrong because you know that they didn't read the scrolls all the time. This is this is the normal folks. This is yeah. the congregation of the Israelites, not yes. those called out to the priests of the temple, the high priests, and all those that are in the little synagogues all around the town. Exactly. These are just normal people, and and they didn't get to go read the word. They didn't know God's word, and the priest had failed mm -hmm. in their duties to inform the people in what God required, and so that brings us to chapter, chapter two. two. Okay. Uh, if you turn with me, it, it goes straight into it, and he says, and now you priests... Mm. Calling them straight out. It, it, this, this next coming word is not for the people. It's for the priests themselves. Uh, he tells them, he says, this warning is for you. If you do not listen and if you do not resolve to honor my name, says the Lord Almighty, I will send a curse on you and I will curse your blessings. Yes, I've already cursed them because you have not resolved to honor me. Because of you, I will rebuke your descendants. In other words, you're... The going back to that line, let, let's stop right there for a second. You've got to go back to uh, the time when they were in the Exodus coming out of Egypt, um, where they where God started setting them apart and they traveled with the tabernacle out of out of Levi, out of Aaron, uh, of the tribe of Levi. They were set aside as the priests for the nation of Israel. Uh, in other words, these were the ones who carried the tabernacle. They're the ones who carried the altar. They're the ones who carried the lampstands. You name it, they carried it. They were the ones in charge of it all. They were the ones to make sure the people were worshiping and sacrificing as they were told. And their descendants, all the, their descendants always became priests. So when he says, I'm cursing your descendants, it means no more. Your bloodline is tainted now. Y'all are not living up to what I've called you to do anymore. Right. So, and being a priest was kind of an esteemed position in some ways. That was, you know, where people looked upon them. These were the people who were supposed to be guiding me and leading me and showing me what needs to be done. And the Lord's saying, not anymore. I'll find somebody else. Yeah. So he, he, he tells them, he says, and I will smear your faces with the dung from your festival sacrifices and you will be carried off with it. In other words, we're hauling you out with the poo. <laughs> I mean, that's what's going to happen. You, and you're unclean. Nobody wants to be around you uh, because you're not fulfilling your job. You're not, you're not teaching these people anything. And you will know that I've sent you this warning so that my covenant with Levi may continue. And my covenant was with him and a covenant of life and peace. And I, and I gave them to him, this called for reverence, and he revered me and stood in awe of my name. So the, the priests are really, have failed the people. He's, he's calling them out. Although he holds the people responsible in, in some ways, in some of their manners, because they should be saying there should be a lot more. But the priests are not sitting there going, hey, that's not what we're doing. When they, bring the, when they bring in that old nag to go put in the temple as a sacrifice, the priest will be saying, no. It's not acceptable. Go away. Bring us the best of the best. Mm -hmm. You know, don't be, don't be bringing us this. This is not what it's up to. But they're just going through the motions. Yeah. Uh, one of the things that I, that I made highlights about was, was right off was in verse 2. Um, he told them that they had not taken the things of God serious. Wow. Uh, and when, when I really got to thinking about um, not taking seriously the things that were important to God, we, we know that the relationship was number one. Because in Deuteronomy 6, we know that he said that um, you are to love me with all your heart, all your mind, and all your soul. Uh, but not only was the relationship uh, not been taken seriously, but they had neglected the things of the tabernacle. Mm -hmm. um, 
which made me go back a little bit. Why is it that we don't, or why is it that we neglect certain things? Well, normally the things I neglect is that I just don't care much about those things. Uh, if I've got, okay, for instance, we're about to get ran into. For for instance, uh, we we are. They're fixing to come in there on us. Uh, for instance, I have an older tractor, and his name's Buford. But then I have a newer tractor, and his name's Big John. I I I, can, I You can tell that I uh, neglect Buford a little bit. And I really pay more attention to Big John. So I, it's kind of like I value Big John. Maybe, maybe someone would even say, well, undoubtedly you love that tractor more than you love that other tractor because you neglect to change the oil in it when it should be changed. Poor Buford. You're, you're exactly right. So, so the question here is, you're not loving me like I require you to love me. You are not taking seriously this relationship that I have called you into. And these are the priests. These are the priests. These are the very ones that ought to be in the closest relationship with God. They, they ought to be getting the word, you know. They, they ought to be hearing the voice. And, and if you don't love somebody, you have a tendency not to listen to what they say. You have a tendency not to listen to what they say, and then you also have a tendency to not do what they say. And children who interrupt shall be smitten by the Lord. Yes. Well, what are y'all doing? They're wanting to be smitten. You got a what? Ah. Well, I tell you what, we'll take a break for just a moment while they're doing their hunting, okay? Uh, uh, you know, I, 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 just, I just actually just nearly, you know, I, uh, they're, they're in a hurry. I know that. Are they on a time schedule? Oh, you didn't give them much time in the church? Oh, one man band, no longer here. I got you. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. They all gone? I believe so. Well, that didn't take long. They find what they're looking for? <laughs> okay. So... So, 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 okay. Uh, in verse 7, did, did you but, read no, verse No, that, that was where I paused because I wanted to get oh, okay. to verse 7. So, so not, number one, just kind of keep this in mind. The priests are not loving the Lord and they are not taking seriously the things of the kingdom like their duties at the tabernacle. They're just going through the motions. That's all they're doing. So, Verse 7. For the lips of a priest ought to preserve knowledge because, and I have this underlined, he is the messenger of the Lord Almighty and people seek instruction from his mouth. He's calling for the priest here to... They're the ones who were supposed to be in the Word, which is the, the first five books of Moses, which will be the Torah, and also with the prophets and all them. They should be in that. When people come to them asking what should we be doing, they should be able to give an answer. They should be able to sit there and say, well, this is what the Lord says. Uh, well, I don't, you know, this sacrifice thing, what does it mean? Well, this is what the Lord says. You know, and they basically go over it with them. Well, what does it mean to worship with this way? This is what the Lord says. They're the ones with the knowledge that people, and people are yearning to know. You know, it's, it's just like coming in on, on Sunday mornings, you know, you, you come in with a heart that's willing, wanting to know more. Uh, Paul's job is a little bit different compared to them in some ways 
where he is, his job is, is to equip and encourage and exhort you into a point to where you're striving more to learn more because Peter calls us a, a holy priesthood. We are priests. We should be those people that go out into the world and speak to people also to where when they say, what, what, is this, what does this Jesus God do? We should have that knowledge upon our mouth to sit there and be a witness to people. Uh, here, the priests are called to get these people into that right mindset of doing the relationship with God. Yeah, and, and worship was a key factor yes. for them. Uh, if, if you go back and you read Leviticus, uh, Numbers, um, you, you, you see that they had to instruct the people on how to worship correctly. There was a right way to worship and a wrong way to worship. And, and the priesthood were sitting, setting a bad example. They were actually setting a bad example. I made a note uh, referring back to what you just said. Uh, the priests did not know because they had not been listening at what God was speaking to them. They were apathetic. Yeah. And that had to do with... Um, their worship. Their worship. But I think a lot of it had to do was coming out of Babylonian exile. They came back to a city that was destroyed. They had to build it back together. Uh, the priesthood was re, reinvigorated with Zechariah mm -hmm. to where he was putting them back. Hey, you've got to start doing this. This is what the Lord's calling us to do. But it had gotten to a point where all the, these people were tired. They've been living far away. Uh, for 70 years, they didn't worship God. They were, they were in Babylon. Now, there's a remnant. The, the prophets speak of a remnant who did. Mm -hmm. But they're a low number compared to those that was in exile. Yeah. And the ways of the world kind of gets in every now and then to where, uh, and I hate to say it, it gets into our worship services too. Yeah. To where it's like, are you coming in in reverential worship of God, or are you coming in to um, be entertained, so to speak? Where, you know, the, these priests may have been going through the motions, but it goes back to there's no heart behind it. Right. And then, oh, well, the lampstand in the altar room is dirty. Ah, somebody else will get that. And seeing if they didn't spend time with God, and it goes back to you know this mm -hmm. too, if you're not spending time with God in the Word, in your private worship, your private devotion time, it affects everything that you do with your people. As mothers, as dads, as uh, leaders, as spiritual leaders, and all of you are spiritual leaders, because there's people that are looking at you. There is people that uh, uh, come to you and ask questions. You are setting examples, you know, uh, to, to your loved ones. Being in a Wednesday night Bible study is, is, an example. is, is, a, is truly a wonderful spiritual example because they see that you value church. You value church. So by the priest not being uh, listening and being attentive to the Word of God, um, it affected their leadership. I'll repeat that in just a moment. Uh, yeah, yeah I, I, I'll, let, let me just go ahead and, and, yeah, and tell you again. Because the priest had not spent time with God, because the priest had not listened to the voice of God, because the priest had not done the word of God, it affected their leadership, which then affected the people. And that happens with us, with our children, our grandchildren, our little nieces, our little nephews, uh, our family, our, our neighbors, our friends, uh, our, our peers that we may work with. I mean, if you've been spending time with God, people's going to know it. Your children will know and value the things you value. 
If you do not value it, they will not value it. I guarantee it. So every time that you tend to the things of God's kingdom, uh, you are instilling within your children and grandchildren and the people that, that you love, that you love the Lord. And that's that's the most powerful tool you got. And that, that was for the priests, that was their most valuable tool. But they'd messed up. And it had not only affected them, but it affected everybody that they were to be ministering to. So, yeah, okay. That was verse 7? Yep. <laughs> I thought I had another thought, but I don't. On verse 7? No. No, keep going. Uh, verse 8, he, he tells them, look, you've uh, basically Malachi, he goes in here and he tells them, you, you've turned away and your teaching is not fruitful. Uh, you're, you're not helping anybody. Probably people are coming to them and asking questions. Uh, they're coming to worship. And people are like, why are we doing this for? Uh, it's written down somewhere. You know, it's not... It's not giving the people to understand that this is a form of worship. Uh, go back into um, Exodus where they first are in the, uh, the Exodus itself, leaving Egypt, wandering around for 40 years. When he sets up the tabernacle, there are several feasts they have to do or several sacrifices they have to do daily, which is a form of worship. Uh, there's, uh, you still have the Passover. That's a form of worship. And so the priests are like, you've, you've turned away from it and you're not giving these people the answers they need. And you basically violated the covenant that God has, had made with Levi back many years ago. And remember, the Israelites in the Old Testament, it was a covenant relationship. And basically it was, if you do this, then I will do this. Yeah. Uh, I, I think, what, it's been three, four years since we did the covenant study? Yeah, we did a covenant study. Uh, hey, hey, guys, have y'all still not found what y'all are looking for? That's a, I, think, I think that's a U2 song. How do y'all know? Yeah, it is. Isn't it? Yeah. Have you still not found what you're looking for? Yeah, yeah, it is. Have you still not <laughs> found what you're looking for? Stop, stop, so, please. Do what? Do we have anything? What do you mean? What? Blue sticky notes. And what would, ladies and gentlemen, on the screen? Hello. Is there, is there a clue? Is there a clue? What's the clue? Where the blue sticky note is? What's the clue? What is it? They won't tell you the clue. So y'all might need more. The password is armadillo. <laughs> there supposed to be a word that they're supposed to speak to me, but they've not spoke that word to me yet. What's the word? What's the word, Armadillo? The word. What's the password? The password is nothing. And she said, do you not have any something? Uh, but anyway, that's kind of the... <laughs> Don't let us bother y'all. The girls are going to yeah. get giddy here, mm -hmm. I can tell. Yeah, they're kind of younger. and. Uh, but but getting, getting back to them. Covenant. What it, what it, yeah, go back to the covenant. Uh, we, we were talking about the covenant of where it was God had, God had made several covenants. There was the Ab Abrahamic covenant. There was the Davidic covenant. Uh, there's several covenants there that's in play, but it's where the, the priests were in charge of maintaining that order of the covenant. And the problem is, is they've humiliated, uh, it even says here, they've humiliated themselves to a point to where it means nothing anymore. Um, and the Lord despises that. Uh, and that's, that, you know, I'm scared I'm going to get ran over. Look, my anxiety is way up right now. It's like herding cats. But, but the covenant, they're not keeping it. So therefore, the worship is half-hearted, if anything. Mm -hmm. And so with that, you know, we, we kind of make a covenant with the Lord when we, 
We make a covenant with the church when we take our church vows. Yeah. Our times, talents, graces, mm -hmm. and, you know, of where we're going to be a member of that part. So how does that covenant work even with today? Even We're not under this old covenant. We're under the covenant of the blood with Jesus. Right. But we fall, do we fall short of that covenant to where it can ever become a humiliation for us, so to speak? Okay. Uh, was you raising your hand? Yes. Okay, can, can I... Can I can, let me deal with this first. Okay. Um, you can leave that open because I've given them permission to run in and out. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't think it would take them as long as it's taking them. And I didn't know they would be as disruptive as they are. I didn't know they'd be running through the building, you know. I thought they would come in, be very quiet, and look around you know, do what they were going to do, and then slip back out. You're talking about our church kids, right? <laughs> Only my daughter, who can't find her way out of a paper sack. <laughs> anyway, the co our, our covenant was... It goes back to exactly what I said earlier. When uh, Jesus said, when, when the rich young ruler came to yep. Jesus, and he said, what must I do to inherit eternal life or the, etern or the kingdom of God. And Jesus told him, go sell all he had, you know, blah, mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. But he told him in the midst of that, that uh, you're to love the Lord your God with, with, with all your might, all your power, all your strength, and to your love your neighbor as yourself. Mm -hmm. So this loving thing gets to back into playing into, into par in New Testament because when you love something, th something, you're going to give it attention. Mm -hmm. And you're going to give attention to detail. Uh, you will be focused upon it. And it goes back to the story about Buford and, and, and Big John. Uh, you know, what you love, you're going to devote to it. You're going to be faithful to it. You're going to honor it. You're going to do everything in you, can, you, you can for something you love, whether it be materialistic possession or whether it be a relationship. So getting back to our vows, when we take, whether it be marriage vows, whether it be vows to the church, whether it be vows to the lodge, whether it be vows to whatever, when we take a vow, a vow is a vow. Mm -hmm. And we are to be faithful to our vow. It's a covenant. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that we vow to, you go into covenantal relationship. Except we're just not slaughtering a calf between us a blood Exactly. Covenant. When you and I shake hands on a deal, that's a covenant relationship. And, and sometimes, see, we don't even think that way. Uh, because we don't value relationship like God values relationship. Yes. That's the bottom line, y'all. We live in a culture that does not honor, honor covenant because they don't understand covenant. Everybody that goes through premarital counseling with me, I teach them about covenant relationships. Hey, it's going to talk about it in this chapter. Covenant relationships. And guess what? There is actually four things in the Bible that frees us from a covenant relationship. And we're going to talk about it. If we ever get there because of these kids that just keep wandering around. What are you saying? Nothing. What? Nothing. You said it? Amazing! I've been waiting all night for somebody to say nothing. Thank you. Shoo away. Yeah, thank you for saying nothing. They were standing there holding the word, and I said, What? And Maddie goes, Oh, oh and, and Michael says, Nothing. No, they were trying. I said, Thank you, Jesus. They were trying to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. Phew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, glory Jesus. to God. Uh, I'm thinking, when are they going to come over here and say it? Okay, JJ's question. Okay. Uh, yes, they, they were just having fun. I was messing with them. I'd give them permission. It was all good. It was all good. All, all in fun and games. JJ. Yeah, over the last seven months, we've been talking about how, about, and you know, it's the same thing every time. Uh, over, they had come back for a hundred years prior when Nehemiah had rebuilt everything, Ezra had read the law. Man, they got on fire for the Lord. Haggai, Zephaniah, all them were in there. Go get going. And, and just like, just like before, they got used to the ordinary. You know, it, it's kind of, you know, it, it's really, it's, I've been around you guys 20 years, which it's kind of a new crowd in 20 years, but some of you is the same. But you can get used to the ordinary. Uh, you can go and go through the ritualism of worship. Uh, you know, well, well, we're going to go to church Wednesday night. What do y'all do on Wednesday night? Well, we eat and we have Bible study. Uh, sometimes the kids run around while we're trying to have Bible study and you can't get nothing done. Y'all know I'm kidding, right? Okay. All right. But uh, uh, then Sunday, you know, what, what do you do on Sunday? Well, we go to church. You know, we get up and we get ready and we go get a biscuit and we go to Bible study, you know, go to small group. And then we have worship that starts at uh, 10 something, 10.45, 10.30. What time does it start? 10.45? Yeah, and, uh, you know, sometimes he gets through at 11.45. Sometimes it's 12. Uh, then we go eat lunch. The ritualism had become the ordinary. And rather than hearing the voice of God, they had allowed worship to become ordinary and become a ritual, and they did not seek to listen to the voice of God. And it not only happened with the priest, but it happened also with the people. And then it becomes neglect. Then it becomes neglect. God had never forsaken the people, but the people had forsaken God. What would your answer be to that, J.J.? Oh, I, would, I was just wondering, uh, I just wondered if they were like distracted or... It's like yes. Yes. Revelations. Well, you know, and, and and there is so many things. You know, the kids got bigger, and, and we got to playing ball on the weekend. I, I mean, we've all dealt with this, y'all. Y'all know this is real life. We love our kids. We want our kids to be. Uh, involved. We want our kids to have the great things of life. And, well, you know, they started letting me work some on Saturday and Sunday. And I just got out of the habit. It happens, guys. I, I, and, and the thing about this is we're just not honest with ourselves. Just... Oh, yes. It is a lot easier to break a habit than it is to make it a habit. Because how many days does it take to make a habit? 21. What would y'all say? 21 days, two weeks. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, you've got to do something to make it a habit. But you can quit doing something, and you don't think about it anymore. COVID. Maybe they had a case of COVID, mm -hmm. you know? I'm telling you, two rounds of COVID will get people out of the habit. Uh, you and I... We have habits. Now, what we have to ask ourselves is, is how many holy habits do we have? Holy habits. 
Uh, holy habits is prayer, reading the Bible, church, serving, doing ministry, you know, uh, reaching out to people. Uh, but it's really easy. And they had become complacent. We, we live, our society today, I think, is much like their society then, except they just didn't have all the stuff that we got. You know, they really got excited when they got chariots. You know? They, they really got excited, you know, when they moved into a new uh, area and they had clay that they could make clay ovens. You know, we get excited, you know. Well, y'all don't even know. Yet. We got excited when we got a microwave, right? You know? I, I remember my granny... When my granny got electric stove. I love Coach because he remembers when he got power. Oh, yeah. I say, I, yeah. Uh, I, re I remember one of the biggest things that in my house that was the most exciting is that was when you could take a telephone, extend an antenna, and walk away from the wall. <laughs> because you would find my sister wandering around in the yard. Yeah. <laughs> and, you knew, and she knew how far she could walk before the telephone wall signal. And there was this beaten path in the backyard where she walked back and forth. The Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 12, and I, mm -hmm. and I use this text a lot. Romans 12, 1. Memorize it. Be not conformed to this world. Mm -hmm. It is so easy to be conformed. That we live in a world that operates 365 days a year, 24 hours a day. I didn't grow up in that world. Some of you, that's all y'all know, you young people. But I didn't grow up in that world. I grew up in a world where we had to eat dinner on Sundays at our house because there wasn't a restaurant open. Well, it hasn't been long since things are open in Coleman. I, I know. Well, you know, my kids, are, like our kids will never know the difference between when you couldn't just ask Google for answers. Sure. Like my kids think it's crazy that they're still dictionaries. When Michael got his first dictionary a few years ago, he was like, what is this? We have encyclopedias. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I still remember how to work the Dewey Decimal System out of the card catalog. I never had to use the Dewey Decimal System. Peter and Fred was talking about that, and I said, I don't Did any of y'all have a cyclopedia with the discs? Mm. -mm. Yeah. But you, but you it see, it was big. It was big. But, but saying all that, you can put it back to these folks. Yeah. They're in a whole new environment again. They're in, they're, this is a hundred years after, but yet this is a new generation that was raised by a generation that came that was in exile. Mm -hmm. So this is all kind of new to them. It was new. And so the, the trying to understand what worship meant. Yeah. How important it was to go to the temple. How important it was to listen to the priests, although the priests were failing at their job. And, that, and, and see, and that goes back to right back to what we said. But it was the priestly leadership, mm -hmm. they were going to be held responsible. That's where it falls in. You've got to be careful of who you listen to. Exactly. And that, that, it goes back into where in the New Testament says to test the scriptures, test the message. Study to show yourself approved. I don't not know if to man, know, but to God. I, I don't know if y'all know this or not, but when Paul preaches... I write notes and figure out if he's actually telling the truth or not. You better. I put them on my phone. And, and so I have to ask, how many times have you called him and he'll not be right? Well, I have only called him a couple of times because I wanted him to clarify stuff. Yeah. Because he'll leave something hanging and I'm like, you didn't explain that well. Tell me what that meant. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
that knows the word and they will hold me accountable. So therefore I try real hard then when I am preparing to make sure I cover all my bases. Yeah. But they didn't important. have that here. The people are wanting answers. They only had the first five books. They didn't have all the That's what it, well, it, The thing is, is the priest could tell them whatever they wanted to. Yeah. But the priests had it. Yeah. The, the priest had it. And, and, and the biggest thing, going back to that question that J.J. asked, the priest was not worshiping God. They wasn't coming and doing their daily sacrifice with sincerity. They wasn't doing their, their daily sacrifices, their daily offerings, their daily worship. And therefore, they wasn't hearing the voice of God. He had, he had told them, I've pulled away from you. Yes. You can offer. Yeah, I, we're getting, yeah we're, we got to shut down. So... <laughs> So, yeah, he said, you know, I'm not, going to, I'm not going to accept your worship. You can go and you can offer all the burnt sacrifices you want to and do all the things that you want to do, but guess what? It's not acceptable You're to me. You're going through the motions. That was verse 13. I don't think mm -hmm. we got there yet. No, we haven't got that. I far. think we're in verse 7 and 8. Yeah. <laughs> But verse 9, he, the Lord goes on and tells the priest, he said, So I have caused you to be despised and humiliated before all the people, because you have not followed my ways, but have shown partiality in matters of the law. Going back to the law, that's the covenant law that was, that was given. Uh, they're not only showing partiality to themselves, they're supposed to be holding themselves even tighter. I mean, when you get into the priest, have to do this. This is how they are to be dressed. This is how they are to be consecrated. This is how they are to approach the Holy of Holies. I mean, it was very steadfast down to you put one tablespoon of this in it. Because if you put two, it's going to blow up. But they were, they were coming half-heartedly. And but with that, they were also, when people would call and ask about matters of the law, it depended on who you were. To where, am I allowed to do this? Yeah, you're the banker. You can do that. Yeah. Am yeah. I allowed to do that? No, you're just a stable guy. You can't do that. Yeah. Uh, it's favoritism. Show no partiality. I mean, I, I know we live in a world that's, that's really difficult. Mm -hmm. I mean, because, you know, it's just... There's some people easier to love than other people. Y'all know this, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, y'all know this. Some people are easier to love than other people. But in the case of faith, in the case of me bringing my sacrifice and I'm poor and, and, and my lamb's got a defect upon it, and Chris is rich, and he brings these really nice lambs that have no defects, and they accept his, but yet they charge me double because I'm a nobody to get a lamb that's worthy of sacrifice. And I think that's why I, I believe it was... That the, happened. I believe it was the Apostle Paul that said, God has no partiality to man. Right. He and looks the, at us all the same. And the priest showed partiality. Yep. So, we got to close. Yep. I knew we wouldn't. How get you going to do that? I knew we wouldn't. How get you going to do that? Um, I don't know. We'll have to pick up there at verse 10 next week. So, so let's close with that thought. Uh, the Lord doesn't show favoritism. Uh, we are all favored in his mind. Yes, because of Christ. Um, I'm no more holy than any of you. You're no more holy than me. Because of Jesus. Jesus made a sacrifice for you and I, and God the Father accepted it. So therefore, ye are holy when you believe and accept in Jesus, believe Jesus. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So therefore, we're... We are shown God's favor because of Jesus. Now may we go as priests and priestesses and show our love for God and our neighbor. In Jesus' name, amen.